Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to replace a shell on a Game Boy Advance SP. Um, as you can see, mine has seen much better days. Um, I actually picked this up at a thrift shop for about 10 bucks. I um, was really excited with this one because this is the AGS 101 model. Um, this is the brighter screen, uh, a better screen, some more sought after. Um, and definitely don't like the um, all of the scratching um, and kind of peeling away that this is starting to have. Um, it works perfectly fine. All the buttons are nice and crisp. Um, you know, the hinge is nice and solid, which a lot of times on these old ones that you find that they're really, really worn out. Um, so we're going to go ahead and show you how to start taking this apart. Uh, first thing you want to do, um, I actually have a little set here um, of precision drivers. You can kind of find them in any uh, hardware store. Uh, mine came with a set. It has uh, all different kinds of heads in here. Today we're going to be using a small Phillips and a, uh, a Y kind of Phillips type head on there. Uh, first thing you want to do is replace the or remove the battery. Now if you guys are ever taking these apart and you find that the battery housing is really really tough to come off or if there's some type of like bubbling, um, the battery is now damaged. So you guys are going to want to replace that battery not use the same one. Um, I don't know the technicals behind it but uh, I know that it definitely should not be ever bulging. Um, I actually picked one up for parts uh, and had it bulging and I had to get rid of it because um, it's no good to me anymore. So once that Phillips head is taken out, you can switch over to the Y-shaped bit, uh, and you're going to want to remove the one right here by the game slot. Okay, then there's one, two, three, four, five, still on the back, just like so. Make sure to keep your hardware mark off where you've gotten it from, so that that way makes putting it together much more easier. Now I bought a shell offline uh, from a company called uh, retromodding.com, uh, amazing site, actually got my shipment within a few days actually. Uh, and they have all different sorts of uh, replacement parts for these things, battery housings, batteries, um, triggers, um, even just screen protectors, the shell. Uh, all sorts of things you can find on their website. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. And you guys can check it out. Um, before I go any further, I'll show you guys here. So this here is a new screen uh, cover right here. This one's actually glass. Um, so it will uh, hopefully scratch a lot less. Uh, and it said that the clarity is a lot better on the, on the glass one. Um, so I'm excited to kind of see what that will turn out to look like. Um, also picked up a... Um, Legend of Zelda inspired uh, shell for this one. Uh, so as you can see, and these things don't come with a hinge. Um, you can buy those things separately. Um, so if your hinge is still in good shape, when taking it apart, be cautious uh, and let's not damage it uh, so that you way you can still use it. Um, because again, when typically when buying a shell, you won't find um, the... Um, you won't find the hinge in there with it. So, as you can see, this all kind of comes together and all of our hardware here. So I will just end up using the new hardware uh, as opposed to the old one, just because it came with it. Um, it's pretty neat, like even it has like the little Nintendo uh, little sticker there, as you can see, it goes on top of there which is pretty awesome. Um, so once you've gotten your one, two, three, four, five, six Y-shaped screws out, uh, carefully open it. Um, I've already gone ahead and removed um, the little uh, rubber stoppers covers that are on here. Um, it looks like someone had attempted it once before. You can see that it's really, really scratched up in and around there. Somebody probably took a screwdriver and was digging in there trying to get it out really, really hard. Um, I just took them off with a uh, small flat head um, and just kind of got underneath, popped them off. You won't need to keep these, especially if your hardware comes with, or your shell, sorry, comes with hardware that has these new little stoppers over top of them. So you won't have to worry about saving yours. You can see they've got little stickies in there. Um, so we won't need to keep those. Um, I discarded them. They're actually pretty, uh, pretty 
pain to get off. So um, switch over to a star bit Phillips and then we're gonna remove the screws around the screen. So you should have one, two, three, four, and five. Again, if you're using the same old hardware, Put it off to the side, remember which one comes up from where so you don't get those confused. Uh, if you're using new hardware like I am, we can just discard those. So, like so. Actually came with a little uh, piece on the back to put on to make it still look like it came from Nintendo, which is pretty cool. So let's just get rid of those. Okay. So close this again, flip it over, remove the back piece. So you have your board in here, okay? This is like where the Game Boy go, the cartridge goes, you know, your link cable, your power, your left and right triggers. So now this will, back part of the screen, will separate like so, so you still see the screen protectors on there. Um, for the longest time I didn't know there was a protector on there until I took one of these apart and it was a very smart idea to have it on there, um, just for how Many times kids will play with these kind of things and you don't want to uh, damage any of those. Okay, so once we've got that back plate off, we can go ahead and remove these three Phillips to be able to take the board off safely. Just like that. And remember when removing the board, that you still have the ribbon cable that's in here so you don't want to tug on this and have that come off so when pulling the ribbon cable off it's hard to see but there's these two little safety pins on either side push those up uh, and it will let go of the ribbon cable for now we can be done with the board until we are putting it all together comes the delicate part of removing the screen. Make sure not to damage the screen uh, when removing it. Um, just very carefully you're going to want to slide this ribbon cable through here. Oh, actually, did forget a screw there. This will make our lives a little bit easier. There. Actually, takes off this cover piece that way we can see the screen here gently push that through I would just take this just set this off here off to the side so removing the hinges is um, takes quite a bit of force actually um, you'll notice that once getting them um, most of the way free they push off they push out very easily um, you want to kind of have it about halfway in about this position here um, and then give it a good amount of force with a Phillips screwdriver um, and just be very careful to stab yourself in the hand see you can see it popped out there on the side we'll move it all the way open now stick it back inside there and then, you now see that side came off quite easily. And then we just need to be able to remove this side from here. Again, be very careful not to stab yourself in the hand or to let this hinge go flying. There we go. Okay, left side, right side if you're looking at the game pad there. Perfect. So, essentially, once you've removed the old shell, you don't need any of these pieces anymore. If you want to keep it for anything, go ahead, backup pieces or anything like that. But again, if you get uh, a new shell, uh, pretty much any website you go to, you'll see that it comes with, um, it already comes with buttons in place, with your shoulder buttons already there. Um, it comes with the case that goes around the screen. It typically comes with hardware as well. So again, um, it gives you even like little caps. It's a little bit hard to see in this bag. Um, it gives little caps to replace on the ends of the, um, on the end of the hinges there. So you can see that there. So let's just slide in. 
Again, those are just kind of like beauty caps that you guys will have on the sides here. Um, so we'll put those down for now so don't lose those. Like so. Um, but again, yeah, you really want to make sure that you're harvesting out your hinges. Again, if they're in good shape. If they're not in good shape, um, if your Game Boy opens and closes very, very easily and you don't hear any of those clicks, um, I would definitely recommend replacing them. They are fairly cheap. Um, obviously, the board we're going to want to keep. Um, we do have, again, D-pad, A and B, start and select. We don't need any of these because our kit has come with all of that hardware necessary. Obviously, the speaker we're going to want to keep. So we're going to want to be able to hear our game. So this just actually sits down here and uses the magnet and the speaker to keep in place. Um, so don't worry if this just falls out. Um, mine didn't, kind of was just holding on to the uh, screwdriver here. So this will just kind of sit in a place once we have everything together. And you can see the connect or the connectors here that will just sit on here like so. Okay. And just like that. So you should have your speaker. Okay. Your board. The slides for the power usually fall off. The sound usually you have to kind of just pull on, uh, and we'll get those removed. Um, but this one's not in bad shape, and actually I don't seem to see one for either actually in the hardware. So I think we're gonna end up keeping both of those, and then here we are. And again, yes, this piece right here. Couldn't see it; it's right in front of my face. <laughs> So, we'll keep that. Obviously the screen. Now, to get the screen protector off, you will have to use um, a heat source. I suggest using a hair dryer. Um, it's hard to say how long to keep it on to heat it up um, because obviously uh, everyone's hair dryers are all a little bit different. Uh, if you have access to a heat gun, um, I'd probably suggest not using it just because of all the amount of heat that will come off of there. And don't want to warp the screen that's in behind here um, just because it is sensitive electronics in there. So what I'll do is uh, I will add some heat to this, be able to pry this off, and then we will set on our new um, glass screen protector. Okay. Okay. So as we can see, uh, old screen protector here uh, really scratched up very dirty uh, it's really hard to clean in behind that plastic without taking it off um, it picks up well on the camera you can see a big scratch in the bottom uh, I mean for 10 bucks picking this up uh, and it all still worked it was amazing so we can get rid of that now um, with our glass on there is a lot more reflective uh, it does see uh, it does feel heavier too obviously being glass we'll see over time uh, how it holds up I uh, don't have any question that uh, clarity wise it will be better um, with having the glass as opposed to plastic. Um, so we're going to want to be able to put our uh, screen into our housing, but first we need to make sure to put our hinges in uh, because there will be no way to access those afterwards. Um, so we have them here. I want to just slide, oops, sorry, slide those caps off. We can get rid of those caps. We do have our new. Uh, shell caps again minor gold just because I've gotten the Legend of Zelda looking one um, Whatever color you get uh, would come with the matching um, Hinge covers for them as well There slide on just like so Okay, so I did leave them still left and right again if you're looking at the gamepad not too sure i don't think that they uh matter which way they go in but i just like to find out to pull something out i'm going to put it back in the same spot so we're going to want to line up Let's see how well it shows up in the camera there's a little notch just on the top here and there being a notch on the hinge we want to make sure that we're putting it in and lining it up correctly now remember there was a quite a bit of force needed to put them in the first place so or to take them out rather so you will have to put a little bit of force putting these back into the shell but again just make sure we are lining up put your pressure open it up and then pop them back into place okay 
Um, so the shell being very, very new and these hinges are not worn out. Um, it is a little bit stiff, uh, which is okay. Again, uh, sometimes you'll see them and they kind of just like this old one here with no hinges, but I mean like they just, they flap open. There's, they won't stay up. You know, they have this, that ends up happening to them because the hinges aren't there to hold them up anymore. So hinges are in place. They look good. Perfect. Okay. Take our screen. Screen side down. Okay. Like so. Carefully take our ribbon cable and fold it into the slot. Like so. Let's see. Put our finger on the back here, flip it all the way over. Gently got it out. And then, so we don't have to worry about the ribbon cable falling out, um, just grab your little half circle clip here. This will go on like so. Again, carefully flipping it over. Um, it'll take one of the very small uh, Phillips head screws. I'll show you once it's on the screwdriver. Um, it is a very small, it's not a very long one. Um, again, always important when it comes to uh, putting anything together or uh, taking it apart is just remembering what goes where um, and also when it comes to tightening and over tightening you don't want to over tighten it um, because it's plastic okay once it goes in snug um, plastic can strip um, and then that screw will just eventually pop out. Same thing with electronics, if you tighten too close, too hard onto the board, the last thing you want to do is tighten way too hard on the board and then uh, it cracks the board. Um, so we can actually put on the back plate now for the screen, so that way we don't have to keep hugging the screen when we're moving it around. Okay, just like so. Clip into place. Okay does seem to be a little bit thicker um, with the glass on there as opposed to the plastic. It did feel a little bit thicker, uh, but once we get the screws in there, it won't have a problem. Okay, so I went ahead and got one of those screws in there. It was definitely a little bit tougher getting it in. Um, as you can see here, it does want to kind of push away as this almost wants to sit flush. Um, so just put in one of those screws there, um, just to hold it in a place, to move it, see, there we go. So once it sits in there, it is fine. Um, again, I think it's just the small added thickness of the uh, glass screen protector as opposed to the plastic one. Um, I mean, these third party companies do amazing work um, but again obviously specifications can be off just a smidge um, and that's what I believe is why this is that much tighter also it could be just because it's a brand new shell um, the other one was already kind of stretched out like so add in our last screw There we go, perfect. Um, I will leave this last one out uh, and the stickers just to make sure once I've got everything in there, everything is correct um, and don't have any issues with it. But for now, we can close this, flip it over. Our screen brightness has seemed to have fallen out. So we'll just place that back in there. It's making sure that the uh, little sun is in the right way cover with the cover okay we can pop the speaker out add in our little piece of felt drop in our speaker there's nothing holding that in there that gets held in place by the uh, circuit board so then we will carefully reinstall the and we'll do it on the table and we will zoom in a little bit here folks it's a little easier to see what is going on here just a smidge 
Legion short. There we go. So, place a ribbon cable in. And once it is sitting in, add your locks. Oh, so once we get to installing the ribbon cable, just very carefully slide it in to place. Like so, I want to be able to push those locks in once they're in place. There we go. So, now once everything is in place, we can flip our circuit board back over, let it sit in, we'll grab our screwdriver. We'll lay this down at the top of here, not to scratch the top. Okay, so we'll grab our board screws. These ones are just kept from the other one. Um, just to be certain that these are the correct length. Um, these ones here are more gold color. Again, once it's snug, you don't need to make any quarter turns. Um, once it is snug inside the shell, stop turning. So that way, again, we don't strip the housing, brand new housing that we just got, uh, and we don't put any extra unwanted pressure on the circuit board. Fire in the last one here. Grab our slider for our power. Okay, just like so. Then we want to grab the bottom part. Okay, you can see already the L and R is already in place, which is awesome. Fit this onto here. Uh, you can see once if you're unsure of which direction uh, on or off is, once you get the bottom plates on, uh, you can just make sure that it's on the off switch uh, position. So we're gonna swap out the Phillips for the Y-shaped uh, screws here. The four longer ones, as well as we can see, um, are for the four corners to hold those into place because it's the thickest part of it. Um, easier to remember. Four long screws, four corners. So we'll drop one of those in here. Like so. Here and then there. Okay. So I'm going to leave the last two on the bottom here just because I want to make sure that we've gotten everything in properly uh, when putting in the battery. Um, leave just to make sure that we're reading correctly where positive is up top, negative on being on the bottom with the L and R buttons if they're on the bottom. Grab your battery, um, pop it in, slide it down, grab your battery housing. Grab your screwdriver. Just realized, guys, I missed out uh, one key thing. The uh, little square, almost looks like a nut, um, actually goes right in here. I was trying to figure out why I was having troubles getting the uh, battery plate on, um, on the back there. So that just kind of will fit into place here. Ooh. or not but we'll fit in there um, it's just fits it with pressure um, but once you get that in there it'll look like this one uh, on the old one right in there um, and that's what the battery hatch screw uh, will go into um, and just like that just like so and then let's see if it all there we go. 
So it's all in now. Does look a lot brighter. Does definitely look a lot nicer having uh, a new shell on this than the uh, old shell. As you can see, a lot bigger difference. Huge Legend of Zelda fan. So, I mean, this is awesome. Um, build quality wise, sometimes you can get these shells and they're almost transparent. Um, this actually is uh, very, very high quality. Um, it almost feels, you know, thickness-wise, feel-wise, um, as the original Nintendo one. Um, so really, really impressed. Again, got all this from uh, RetroMods.com. I will leave a uh, link in the description below um, so you guys can go check them out. I'm not at all affiliated with them. Uh, just happen to get some products from them and uh, are extremely happy with it. Uh, if you guys enjoy my video, please hit that subscribe button, like it, leave a comment in the comments comments below uh, and uh, if there's anything you guys are looking for me to do next just let me know thank you for watching bye bye